What's up guys, my name is Jack, Easy Mode Exams. I have a first class degree in biochemistry and my goal is to make your exams and studying as easy as possible. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at everything you need to know for the mass number and isotopes topic for AQA A-level chemistry. So what do you need to know? Now, this on the screen right here is straight out of the AQA A-level chem specification. It's gonna be linked in the description down below. I highly recommend checking it out yourself, saving a copy, ticking it off as you learn the specification, okay? This is the rules to the game. Exams are a game, don't forget that, okay? So this is everything you need to know. First off, we have mass number, which is given the symbol A, capital A, right? And you have atomic or proton number, okay? And it's given the symbol capital Z. Now you as a student should be able to determine the number of fundamental particles in atoms and ions using the three following things, mass number, atomic number, and charge. We'll look at exactly what those things are and how you have to do that. And you also need to be able to explain the existence of isotopes okay and know what they are now a little bonus here understand ions and ionic charge now this isn't actually mentioned in the specification but you 100 percent need to know it and understand it so i've added it into this lesson to give you a bit of a head start so first thing here then is understanding elements. Now there are two main pieces of information you need to know. So let's look at this example of nitrogen right here. And this is how you would see it in the periodic table, right? So what does this top number 14 mean here? This is what we refer to as our mass number, okay? And this is simply the total number of protons and neutrons in the atom or in the nucleus, okay? Again, this is given the symbol capital A. So that's our 14, that's our top number. What about this seven, our bottom number here? This is our atomic number, okay? And this is just the number of protons in the nucleus. And again, this is given the symbol capital Z. All right, guys, so there's something really important that you just, GCSE concepts, but just a little bit of recap here for you guys that just really understand this, okay? The atomic number is unique to each element, okay? What does this mean? It means that therefore, the number of protons for a specific element will never change. It will never change. Only the number of neutrons or electrons will change. If you change the number of protons, it is no longer the same element, okay? So that's really important to get your head around that, just to begin with, real basic concept there. Now there's two things I'm going to look at now. We're gonna look at them briefly, and then I'll go into far more detail. So first off, you need to know about isotopes and ions, okay? and what these are. So what are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms which have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, okay? And ions, on the other hand, are atoms which have the same number of protons, but different number of electrons, okay? So remember these two definitions, all right? Because they can ask you this in your exam, so learn these definitions, super easy definitions to remember. Isotopes is just a different number of neutrons, Ions is just a different number of electrons. Now we have to consider their charge, okay? So when we're looking at isotopes, the different number of neutrons equals no change in the overall charge, since neutrons are neutral, okay? It's literally in the word. Whereas when we come to ions, the different number of electrons equals a different charge. Why is this? It's just simply because electrons have a minus one charge overall. So if you change the number of electrons in any way, it's going to change the overall charge. Right, so that's the basics out of the way. Let's look at these in far more detail, okay? So let's start with isotopes. Now, let's say we're looking at an atom and we're changing it into an isotope. What is the difference between these two things right here? the mass number changes, okay? Whereas, as I said earlier, guys, the atomic or the proton number does not change, otherwise it would no longer be nitrogen. Now, I'm just using nitrogen as an example here, but this applies to every single element, okay? So, if the mass number changes with an isotope, we can therefore calculate the change in the number of neutrons by simply doing the higher mass number minus the lower mass number. 
okay? So whatever question you're looking at, you just look at the highest mass number, for example here for nitrogen, it's 15, you minus the lower mass number, which is 14, and this gives us a change in mass number or a change in neutrons of one, okay? 15 minus 14 is one, easy peasy, right? So that's what you need to understand, is that if you are asked to work out the change in number of neutrons in some way, this is the simple equation that you need to do. So next thing we need to look at is properties, right? Isotopes have similar chemical properties. Why is this? It's because they have the same electronic structure, or you can think of it as they have the same number of electrons, okay? Remember, isotopes, the number of electrons do not change. That's for ions, which we'll look at in a second. The second property that you need to be aware of is that they have slightly different physical properties. So why is this? It's because they have different masses in the nucleus, okay? Remember, neutrons have a mass of one, so if you add a neutron or take away a neutron, you're going to get a different mass, and that leads to different physical properties, all right? So let's look at ions. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing, whereby we start with an atom on the left, I'm using the exact same example of nitrogen, and we switch to an ion. Now what's different here? you notice nothing has changed, guys. When you look at the periodic table, or if you look at the atom and ions in this format with the mass number at the top, atomic number at the bottom, you cannot distinguish them, okay? It's really important to understand. The only way you can distinguish an ion just by looking at it on the page is by their charge, okay? And that will be shown with either a positive or a negative symbol. Okay, so if we look at our fundamental or our subatomic particles, we have a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Okay, and this is their charge right here. So protons again have a plus one, neutrons are zero because they're neutral, electrons have a negative one charge. Okay, so let's say in a question they ask you to say how many electrons have been lost or gained when going from an atom to an ion, you simply have to use this equation, okay? So therefore, the change in number of electrons equals our atomic charge minus our ionic charge. Okay, what does this mean? So atomic charge is always going to be zero, okay? And that's because in atoms and isotopes, the number of protons is going to equal the number of electrons. For example, in an atom, or isotope of nitrogen, you're gonna have seven protons, right? And you're gonna have exactly the same number of electrons, seven, because the charges have to balance for it to be a neutral charge overall. Whereas in ions, you're gonna have a different number of electrons to the number of protons, okay? So, for example, let's say we had an atomic charge for nitrogen of zero, and we had an ionic charge of minus one, you would simply do atomic charge of zero minus minus one, which makes positive one. So our change in number of electrons is going to be one. Okay, pretty simple, hopefully. Wrap your head around that and you should be all good to go. Now, we also need to know the names of these ions, right? So a positive ion is referred to as a cation and a negative ion is referred to as an anion, okay? Now, the way I remembered this back in school was that I like cats, right? So cats are positive. Now, if you hate cats, um, the next best way to remember it, I suppose, would be that cats have a T in it, which looks like a positive charge. So I know some of my mates remembered it in that way instead. So remember, guys, positive ions have lost electrons. Negative ions have gained electrons. The reason why this is switched around is because electrons have a negative charge, so you just have to switch the sign. Positive, lost, negative, gained. Okay, wrap your head around this GCSE concept, you should be all good to go. So guys, that's ions, isotopes, the theory behind it wrapped up. Let's do some test yourself stuff, okay? Some test yourself questions. So I want you to state the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in the following. Okay, because so you've got a bunch of stuff here. Get a piece of scrap paper out and attempt this yourself. Work out, okay, how many protons, neutrons and electrons do the following species have and write it down. Now, if you're not too sure what to do, I'm gonna go through a step-by-step -step method right now of how to solve these. 
So either pause the video and attempt it yourself or watch my method of one example and then solve them. Now, you guys may be being lazy and not attempting this or if it's too easy for you, that's just fine. But if you're starting out with chemistry, really attempt these questions. It will help you out so much. Just a little bit of practice and you'll be good to go. Now, if you're not too sure what to do, here's the method, okay? So remember, changing protons or the number of protons, I should say, is calculated by looking at the atomic number and the neutrons is calculated by doing the mass number, the top number, minus the atomic number. And that will give you the number of neutrons present, okay? Now, electrons is a bit more tricky. You have to think to yourself, is this an atom? If it's an atom, it's super easy. It's just our atomic number or the same number of protons. And then if it's not an atom, you have to think, okay, is it an ion? In which case, you have to do the atomic number plus the change in number of electrons. Okay, so I'm going to use our number seven as an example here. So the first thing you have to think to yourself is, is it an atom or an isotope or is it an ion? So it's an ion, right? So all good to go there. Now, to work out the change in the number of electrons, I went through this earlier. It's simply the atomic charge minus the ionic charge. Okay, so... All we have to do here is our atomic charge, which is always going to be zero, guys, minus our charge of this ion, which is minus one. And that gives us zero plus one to give us a positive one. OK, so so therefore, then the number of electrons is our atomic number 17 plus our change in number of electrons, which is one giving us 18 electrons. OK, so that's how you would do the protons, neutrons and electrons for anything you're given. At this point, attempt questions one to 10 yourself. Obviously, feel free to skip seven. Or if you've already done it, here are the answers. So I'm not going to go through and read out every single one, but hopefully that helped you guys out, do some practice and understand the basics of calculating the number of protons, neutrons and electrons. OK, this can come up in your exams, really basic stuff at GCSE. So it will only be a few marks. But as long as you understand this, you should be fine. All right, guys, test yourself questions done, working out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now some time for some cheeky active recall. Okay, this is so important. Active recall combined with past paper questions is gonna boost your grade so much. So we've got a list of six questions here, okay? Now pause the video and do your best. Get a scrap piece of paper, write some notes on your phone, say it out loud, I honestly don't care. Writing it down is, is the best because it's sort of, concretes it in your brain a little bit more but if you don't have any paper or anything just say it in your head say it out loud whatever you have to do but do your best to answer these questions okay remember what you've just learned from this video and apply it to some active recall okay right so hopefully you guys had an attempt at these questions so number one then define mass number easy stuff guys the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus OK, remember that keyword and you have to put both, otherwise you'll lose the mark. OK, next one is atomic number. So define this is simply the number of protons in the nucleus. All right. Easy stuff. GCSE stuff, guys. All right. So next up, what is an isotope? OK, so define isotope. Essentially, you do need to remember these definitions. OK, isotopes are just atoms which have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Again, real easy, but I want you to just remember these definitions because they can come up. Right, next question. Can you identify whether something is an ion by their atomic or mass number? No, you can't, guys. Only by their charge. If you look at an ion and an atom side by side trying to compare their atomic and mass number, you're wasting your time. Remember, electrons barely have any mass, okay? So you can only differentiate them by their charge. Right, question five. Why do isotopes have one, similar chemical properties, but two, slightly different physical properties? So part one then, because they have the same electronic structure, okay? The keyword here is electronic structure. You can switch this out for electron structure or electron configuration, all right? Those are the keywords AQA likes to see. If you're not too sure what this is, don't freak out. It's all good. It's just the electron configuration or the arrangement of electrons. And I go into far more detail in my electron configuration video. So feel free to check that out. Now, part two then is because they have different masses. All right. Simple as that. Okay. Simple as that, guys. Remember, 
Neutrons have a mass of one. If you change that, the mass is gonna slightly change, leading to different physical properties, okay? Last one here, question six, what is an ion? So the definition for an ion is atoms which have the same number of protons, but different number of electrons. So it's all six questions done, guys. Hopefully you guys got most of those right. If you got ones wrong, just take a note of it. Why did you get it wrong? What do you find difficult about that concept? And just make a note of it for future questions, all right? Focus on your mistakes and you'll improve drastically. So that's it for the active recall. Let's look at a final summary and spec check. So this is everything you need to know for the specification. Mass number, given the symbol capital A. An atomic or proton number, given the symbol capital Z. We did that, easy stuff. And you should be able to determine the number of fundamental particles in atoms and ions using mass number, atomic number and charge. We did that guys, we went through a bunch of practice questions and you need to be able to explain the existence of isotopes, okay? Essentially, you just need to be able to define what an isotope is and the fact that it's an atom with a different number of neutrons, okay? And then lastly, a bonus guys is to understand ions and ionic charge. So I, the reason I put this as a bonus again is because it wasn't explicitly mentioned in the specification, but you do need to know it, okay? I hope you found this video helpful guys. If you did, give it a like. It really helps the YouTube algorithm work its magic. If you have any mates that are struggling, send this video over to them to help them out. Check out one of these videos if you wanna boost your grades even more. Best of luck with your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.